Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as we go from this to this. Let's get to it. This is an original design that I did about a year ago. It's a foam backyard flyer. And I did another video on this previously. I'll put a card up for this. The plane uh, flies really nice. It uses the park zone brick, which is a combination of electronic speed control, two linear servos, in this case for rudder and elevator, and a built-in electronic speed control. Um, I got mine from Steven Zero. Information is in the description. I'll put another card at the top of this video about where you can uh, buy this as other sources uh, Amazon Google if you look for the park zone uh, ultra micro uh, brick But it's a very handy thing to have because you have the micro motor with the geared uh, propeller It plugs right into the brick and then just straight control runs to the rudder and elevator this flies very well the total weight of the airplane is 1.5 ounces and the uh, single cell uh, LiPo battery is 0.2 ounces for a total weight of 1.7 ounces. So I've gotten a lot of feedback on this. People like it. You really, it flies on the wing. You can see in the video that um, it flies well in a parking lot. Let's take a qu quick look to see how it flies in a nearby parking lot. The uncovered original model at a total flight weight of 1.7 ounces really flies pretty well. It's light responsive. <clears throat> It'll dip a little bit because I'm trying to fly slow to um, help with the camera shots. But it's very pleasant airplane to fly, plenty of power and handles well. I've drawn up a set of QCAD plans for this, both in the QCAD format and PDF. You can download it in the description if you'd like to build one. It's really a very simple build. There's just um, 3 16 inch foam board is used for the fuselage. There's two layers hot glued together. For the wing, I just scored about halfway through the 3 16 inch foam board to allow it to bend. And then I cut out some foam ribs that you can see here and just glued it to the ribs. There's a rib at the end in the middle then in the center section and the two halves are glued together the other thing that's very important is you can see there's just a little sliver of a pops popsicle stick by the leading edge to give a little bit of positive incidence that really seems to help with the flying of the model i did have to add a little bit of a uh, nose weight to get it to balance the cg is shown on the uh, shown on the plans and then the controls are just a very simple elevator and rudder with a cutout on the rudder for the elevator to go up but the point of this video is uh, this flies well, 1.7 ounces. I'm curious if we can do some decoration to make it look a little bit more colorful, presentable. I had done some earlier work with these micro flyers using acrylic paint. The paint goes on fine. It doesn't attack the phone, but it is surprisingly heavy when you put on the paint. It just adds a lot of weight. A using any sort of iron-on material with this type of foam is a non-starter. It'll just uh, wrinkle. It just won't. It'll be too much heat to apply to the foam. So what I'm going to try to do in this video is see if we can get away with using the colored strapping tape. This tape is very sticky. It's really quite lightweight. And I have some red. I have some silver ducting tape, and I have some yellow. So I am going to practice seeing if I can apply that to the fuselage. You like to do this before you assemble the model, but we'll do a retrofit to see how it works out. I'll be weighing it every step of the way to see if I add any additional weight, as well as trying to keep the same center of gravity. And um, what that means is I'm going to have to be very careful adding the tape to the tail because that's long, uh, further away from the center of gravity. Uh, see if we can make an improvement, then take it out for another test flight. So that'll be uh, the next step in this video. This is a walk around of the uncovered model. You can see the 3 6 inch foam that's scored on the top. 
Curved over the airfoil, hot glued in place, a little brace to keep the wing in place on the double-sided fuselage. Quite easy airplane to build. So here is the uh, completed, or as far as I'm going to go with the completion, of covering the um, model with the uh, tape. This is the tape that I use. It's uh, strap, pa packing tape, strapping tape. It's, it's very lightweight, but it's very sticky. What I tend to do, because it'll stick on itself very easily, just double it over. I literally put it in my mouth. Double it over here so it doesn't stick. And then you can just very carefully lay it on whatever surface you're going to cover. Once you put it on, it's stuck pretty well. And any time that you're using this tape on a model, it's always, always, always better to put it on before you assemble the model. I already had this together, so I just had to put it as best I could on the wing. The other thing is on the foil tape, the heat duct taping, very sticky, but it has the metallic finish. It's heavy. And so as I started to put this on, just as a test on the back, it started adding weight. The total weight with this tape, the metal tape, and the fact that I had tape in the back that altered the center of gravity, I had had a few washes to the front. So the total increase of this model went up 30%. The non-covered model was 1.5 ounces. This model right here is two ounces. With a battery that weighs 0.2 ounces, the total flying weight is 2.2 ounces. So that was heavier. Um, we'll see if this flies. I know that these motors are good up to two and a half ounces, three ounces, depending on how much wing area you have. But that's where we are with this test right here. And we'll, the, the weather's good. We'll go out and take it for a test flight. One thing that's important with these uh, park zone equipment is you've got to turn the transmitter on first. Make sure you have the right model selected. You take the little one cell LiPo and you plug it into here without it seeing a binded transmitter signal. After five seconds, the receiver will automatically go into the bind mode, which is a good design feature. You don't have to do anything, but you see that flash of light, then you're going to have to bind it again. So we have the plane selected uh, here. Make sure the throttle is down low and we'll plug in the battery. Making sure of the polarity, there's a little red dot that should be down below when you plug it in. So steady light on the receiver. And let's check the controls. Elevator up, down, left, right, and then the throttle. Okay, so I think we're good for a test flight. The covered model, even though the flight weight goes from uh, 1.7 to 2.2 ounces, uh, flies well. Um, it feels a little bit heavier. I think it um, handles a little bit better into the wind. You're gonna have to keep your airspeed up a little bit, but not too much of a weight penalty. And as I discussed in the video, the tape is really very easy to apply. Well, we're back from our test flight, uh, the, a, a parking lot just uh, very near where we live, and the model flew well. Um, you, can, you can see in the video, um, it handled well. It could feel a little bit heavier. Um, there was a little bit of bounce of the model. There were a few gusts that were happening uh, in the evening. But sometimes heavier models penetrate a little bit better in the wind. The model certainly had the power. One thing to keep in mind, I was trying to fly the model a little bit slower to keep within the camera view just so you could see it fly. As airplanes slow down with their airspeed, what will happen is the rudders tend to be less effective because there's just less airflow going over the rudder. In this case, the elevators are pretty good. So what I think I'll do when I update the plans is I'll make the rudder just a little bit bigger. I'll make the elevator a little bit bigger just so you have the added control throw as you need it. If you find that it's not turning, it's probably because you're slow. What you need to do is add some power, lower the nose to get some more airspeed, and that the model would turn well after we did that. So 
I think the takeaway is that the strapping tape is a very suitable candidate to cover this um, foam board, 3 6 inch, inch foam board. It goes on very easily. It's best to do it before you put it on the model, but there's a range of colors. You can plan that out, add decals if you wish. Remember, the color of the foam board when you take off the paper is white, so you can uh, mix with the white colors and the colored tape to get the desired finish you want. And I think this is a fun little backyard flyer, very easy to make, and good luck with your projects. Again, the plans are located in the, in the description. Uh -huh.